London police say they are considering laying terrorism charges against the accused. So for more on that angle, let's bring in Mohammed Al Rashidi. He's a Canadian criminal defense lawyer. He's currently in the United States. Mohammed, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you, Natasha. So, Mohammed, this is your area of expertise. Help us understand why have the police moved ahead with four charges of first degree murder, one charge of attempted murder, but not necessarily with the terrorism charges? Right. So uh, good, these are good questions. I think it's very early on in the investigation, and it's actually fair to say, Natasha, that uh, th this is a it's pretty early to even lay those charges. So the fact that they've done that is indicative of the wealth of evidence that the police has. And as we just heard the chief indicate, there were many witnesses. Uh, we, there may have also been a statement given uh, by uh, the suspect there and now is a defendant. So there seems to be a lot of evidence uh, that is uh, available right off the bat. And that will allow the police to move faster than they would normally need to, where you have an investigation and then you look at the results of the investigation in, in at the very end. So th that would explain the position that the police has taken at this point. Uh, the fact that terrorism charges have not been laid, uh, it, it, we can still wait, and that is still an, a possibility, and we expect that more than likely uh, there will be some decision made about that in the near future. But the terrorism charges are a little bit more uh, cumbersome for the police to achieve. Now, we've seen uh, in the past, such as in the Quebec mosque shooting, it was very disappointing that that didn't go in the direction of terrorism. And the prosecution in that case explained the reason for that. We will see what happens in this case. It's still early, mm -hmm. but we will see. In terms of what's required, uh, I invite people to look at the criminal code. It's important for us to be educated, even if we're not lawyers about these things. It's section 83.01, and that's the section of the criminal code that deals with terrorism. So the police would have to show that an act was had taken place that is in whole or in part for political or religious or ideological reasons, uh, with the objective or the cause is to in whole or in part intimidate intentionally, of course, uh, the public or a segment of the public. Mm -hmm. And that intimidation goes towards their security, their economic well-being or their economic uh, welfare, as well as any choice that they may make in their life. And there has to be intention there to act that causes the uh, bodily harm, death, uh, serious injury, endangering people's lives, so on and so forth, which I think the public can look at this and say uh, it definitely uh, does connect. So, Mohammed, let me ask you for one clarification on that pro point. Sure. What is the distinguishing factor between a terrorism charge and a hate crime? Right. So that's a very good point. So a hate crime, uh, th there's this misconception that a hate crime is a specific crime that one can commit and under a, the specific section of the criminal code. That is incorrect. Hate crime is sort of a catch-all phrase that we use. While terrorism has a specific section, hate crime doesn't really have that. Uh, uh, for example, uh, hate crime is something we deal with when you think of a criminal trial at the back end of the trial in the sentencing phase. So it's like an aggravating factor for sentencing. So for example, there is incitement of hatred. That is section 319 of the criminal code, mm -hmm. as well as 319 sub two. Uh, there are different sections that deal with incitement and, and the propagation of hatred. But the actual act that we would consider a hate crime for example, somebody driving a vehicle and targeting people based on race, uh, based on their religion, based on any kind of prejudice that falls under that section. It would be uh, Section 718.2 of the Criminal Code. That is used to guide judges towards sentencing as an aggravating factor in sentencing. And the, and the Ontario uh, Court of Appeal actually addressed this uh, in a case in 1977 where it said, an attack or an assault that is based on any of these grounds that we've discussed renders the offense more heinous. And the sentence to be imposed in such a case must be one which expresses the public abhorrence for such conduct and the refusal of that public to avail uh, this behavior. So th that's sort of what hate crimes do when you're able to show during the course of a trial that the motivation behind this act is based on prejudice 
but based on prejudice, as we said, religion, race, color, language, Mohammed, uh, mental. Mohammed, yeah, forgive me. Ahead. I'm so sorry for jumping in. I just don't want us to run out of time. And I do have a couple more questions that I want to get sure. into. So one of which sure. is the issue you brought up about uh, the young man that carried out that horrible crime at the Quebec mosque. And Correct. it became explicitly clear that he was targeting a mosque. He was specifically targeting Muslim men. And six Muslim men lost their lives. And countless families were devastated. Um, it's something that so many people are still dealing with. And the prosecution at that time was saying that, or the Crown was saying, that they weren't moving forward with the direction of terrorism because they didn't think they had a high chance of getting him convicted mm. on that charge. Right. So. From a sort of philosophical perspective, should lawyers be laying charges based on, hey, I think I can get a conviction? Or should they be trying to send a message saying, we believe this to be terrorism, the public does as well, and we'll move forward in that direction? What, from your That's point a, of view, is the right way to go? That is an excellent, uh, excellent uh, question. And I think uh, you really nail it on the head by, by pinpointing this uh, sort of the appeal. Okay, justice must not only be done, but the but its appearance also must be done. Right, there cannot be any question that justice is being done. And and in a case where it's very clear to the public that it is a terrorism, that is an act of terrorism, we should lay those charges. Remember, the trial takes a long it takes a long time in the history of the case. There is nothing preventing the police or the crown in this case from laying charges such as terrorism and then removing them later on in the course of the of the case. And, and that's an important aspect of taking into consideration the message we send out, that we believe this is terrorism. Sure, in the course of the case, it may be dropped later on, mm -hmm. but at the outset or early on, we do see it as terrorism. And even if for practical reasons down the road that must be dropped, that doesn't prevent us from laying these charges early on. And that would be a very important lesson that was not followed in the Quebec case, and we hope to see in the London case, if the evidence, of course, supports it, that you lay these charges, just as we do with far less serious cases, where we lay dozens and dozens of charges against the accused and force them to deal with them. And down the road, for practical reasons, a lot of them get withdrawn. Mm -hmm. That's not uncommon. So in this case, there's no reason to be shy about using a term or a charge such as terrorism when it so clearly fits the bill from the public's perspective. Right. Well, the London police have made it quite clear that they are exploring the possibility of terrorism charges, and that may, in fact, happen. But before I let you go, I did want to talk to you about the London police. Now, I don't know if you were able to watch the press conference that we took live on CBC News Network uh, on Monday, I believe, where the yeah. chief of police came out and said, we believe that this man targeted this family because they are Muslims. So on the one hand, people are quite pleased, hey, the police are saying this, it's out there, it's not a secret, and we can now move forward from here with whichever direction people choose to go. But others are saying, wow, that caused a lot of damage and a lot of hurt because you say he was motivated because he was anti-Muslim or anti-Pakistani or whatever the case may be, but didn't tell us why you think this. And from your perspective, from a legal perspective, why do you think the police said, we think this is the motive, but we can't tell you why right now? Yeah, that was a, actually, that's an excellent approach, and, and we commend the police for actually coming out and taking that position, because as we've said in other cases, we've seen this uh, timidness to calling things for what they are when the evidence clearly supports it. So uh, when the police comes out and says that that early on, it's indicative of the evidence that they have. And uh, I, I don't see a reason to criticize that. In terms of the police having to explain why they say that, I mean, this is where we get into give it more time. And, and the evidence will come out. There will be disclosure provided. There will be all uh, the details of the case uh, will be more uh, available to us. But at this stage, you can only expect so much from the police in terms of disclosing, disclosure and disclosing the facts. We don't really need them to justify what they have done. I think they've already taken steps and explained them a lot more than other police forces in this country in the past. Right. And they are to be commended for coming out and stating, saying what everybody knows about these incidents in the past, which is people are targeted based on their, the specific group that they belong to. And for the police to recognize that and say it publicly, 
this early on is a very important step in the right direction. And we look for the law to be applied, as we, we've been discussing just now, to continue to support that perspective. And so the justification for that possible motive or their presumption of that possible motive would come out through the trial in that way? Of course, and, and, and even before the trial. We, we, okay. we will get more information before the trial, but of course it's going to be a part of, uh, of the trial. It's not, there's, no, there's not going to be any secrets here. This is, not, uh, a, 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 this is not something that happens behind closed doors unless it becomes an in-camera uh, trial, which I, I doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in, this is not something that the police is hiding. We just have to give them a little bit more rope. They've already given us all, sorry, a little bit more information or a little bit more time because they've already given us so much information considering the incident has just happened. And, okay. and I'm comparing that to previous cases. In previous cases, we would get very little information at this early stage. We have charges, very serious charges laid. We don't have the terrorism uh, charges laid just yet. That's going to be uh, decided. And eventually, we're going to uh, get more information about why the police moved in the direction that it moved. Mohammed El-Rashidi is a Canadian criminal defense lawyer. Mohammed, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you, Natasha.